So good morning. I, I trust you're all well. I don't know if any of you got haircuts since we last talked. Um, I know I sure didn't. I know that I see online a lot of people learning how to do their own haircutting. And it's really kind of fun. It seems to be the common problem, common challenge, you know, during, our, uh, during the quarantine. And that's kind of fun. We share a lot. Today I'm going to um, bring you three sets of scripture. One, two are from Genesis, and uh, one is from the Gospel of John. We start out in Genesis 33, 18 through 20. Jacob came safely to the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, which is on his way from Padan Aram, and he camped before the city. And from the sons of Hamor, Shechem's father, he bought for 100 pieces of money the plot of land on which he pitched his tent. There he erected an altar and called it El Elohe Israel, God, the God of Israel. Genesis 48:22. The bones of Joseph, which the Israelites had brought up from Egypt, were buried at Shechem in the portion of ground that Jacob had bought from the children of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for 100 pieces of silver, pieces of money. It came as an inheritance of the descendants of Joseph. John 4, 1 through 14. Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard Jesus is making and baptizing disciples, more disciples than John, although it was not Jesus himself that baptized, but his disciples, he left Judea and started back to Galilee. But he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God <clears throat> and who it is, that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. These are the days to let our buckets down into the deep wells of our souls. These are times when we, when we let our buckets down into that well, we sure don't want them to come up full of sand. Wells are essential to the building of human life together in community. The Bible mentions many. Abraham had wells at Gerar. Isaac, now he had a hard time with wells. He dug five of them. But all but the final two were places of contention between Isaac and, and others. Sometimes, wells are the site of important biblical events. Abraham's servant found Rebekah at a well. Moses met his future wife, Zipporah, at a well. Jacob met his future wife, Rachel, at a well. Now, I'm not suggesting that there's a biblical pattern here that, you know, if you need a spouse, you find a well. And there you'll find your spouse. No, I'm not saying that. But it is interesting, isn't it? But of all the wells that figured in the biblical stories, it was Jacob's well that Jesus came to that day. 
By that time, the well had become a hallowed place to the people of the region. It was a well that without a doubt traced back to who they claimed as ancestors, Jacob, Joseph, Ephraim, and Manasseh. In a way, that well was a validation of their identity as a people. In choosing to rest by that particular well, Jesus was beginning to break down the wall of separation between Jew and Samaritan who had been contemptuous of one another for a very long time. The woman wondered how Jesus was going to get the water because the well was deep and he had no bucket. And it was deep. In Jesus' day, it was, it's estimated that that well was 125 to 150 feet deep. I can't imagine. When we lived on the farm, we had a hand-dug 30-foot deep drinking water well that was about 100 yards behind our farmhouse. It had been dug by Dennis's grandfather to have water close by. <clears throat> Before the well, Grandma Gunderson had to walk over half a mile to a spring to fetch water in two buckets that she carried in a yoke across her shoulders, half a mile. Almost daily, Dennis would take two five-gallon milk cans and he'd go down at the well and he'd fill them up with the well water and bring them up to the house. Our tap water was soda water and it was great for, it was really soft and it was great for showers and laundry and cooking, but you couldn't drink the stuff and even worse, you couldn't make good coffee with it. The water that Dennis brought up from that well, however, was sweet. You know, I learned to not take it for granted. To this day, when I pour a glass of water, I can't throw the rest away. I can't dump, it, I can't dump the leftover in the sink. The water is too precious, and the work to get it, too dear. Our well water was too precious to waste. Without the well, there is no water. Without the water, there is no life. It is a well that holds the water. Isaiah says, with joy will we draw water from the wells of salvation. It is what that water becomes in you and in, in me. Jesus says that the water that I will give will become in them, will become in us a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. People, we are the wells. We hold that precious water. How precious is that water? When we drink of it, do we sip a little and can casually throw the rest down the sink? How deep are our wells? Can they hold that gushing water, that gushing water of eternal life? Will we let it flow to others? Spring up, O oh well, within our souls. Spring up, O oh well, and make us whole. And amen. Lord, today we just come to you and we bring our wells to you. And sometimes, Lord, we haven't dug them very deeply, and sometimes they run dry. And in this, these days, Lord, I ask that you help all of us to dig our wells a little deeper, to let that gushing water of eternal life that only you can give become in us, gushing life pouring out to others around us in these days and in the days that we live in the future, let us learn about our wells and what we can do with that gushing water that you have put in them. I pray, Lord, for all of us this day and every day that we let your living water flow generously and freely to others around us. In Jesus' name, amen.